This is part 67 of AngularCRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss handling resolver service errors and displaying meaningful error messages to the user. This is continuation to part 66, so please watch part 66 before proceeding. In most Angular applications, if a component needs data, the component calls the Angular service and the Angular service calls the server-side service. However, Sometimes we may want to prefetch data before activating a specific route. That's when we use a route resolver. Notice we have a route resolver service between the component and the Angular service. Now when this route needs to prefetch data, its associated route resolver is automatically called and the route resolver calls the Angular service. The Angular service in turn calls the server side service for data. Now the important point to keep in mind is if the resolver service throws an error, the target route will not be activated. We stay on the current route. In our application, on the list route, we have a route resolver service configured. This resolver service is in this file. And notice this resolver service is calling the get employees method of our Angular service. Our Angular service is in this file. And we have get employees method right here. And notice this method is issuing a get request to the RESTful API. But we don't have a resource with one at the end. So this is going to throw an error. We are catching that error, logging it to the browser console, and then returning an error observable. This error gets bubbled up to the resolver service. So when this resolver service fails, its associated route, in our case the list route, will not be activated. At the moment, we are on this edit route. Now let me click on this list link to navigate to the list route. Notice what happens. We got errors logged in the browser console and the important thing to notice here is we are still on the edit route. We are not navigated to the list route. Now our requirement is irrespective of whether the resolver service has failed or succeeded, we still want to navigate the user to the target route, in our case to the list route. If the resolver service has succeeded, then we want to display the list of employees. If the resolver service has failed, then we want to display this error message. To achieve this, we are going to create a custom type. I am going to call the type resolved employee list and it is going to have two public properties, employee list and error. Employee list property is going to hold the array of employees when the service completes successfully. If the service throws an error, the error property is going to hold that error. First, let's create this type. I'm going to place it in its own file. So within the employees folder, let's add a new file. I'm going to name it resolved employee list dot model dot ts. Let's name our class resolved employee list. Include a constructor and our first public property, employee list. This is of type employee array. We don't have employee imported, so let's import it. And our second public property is error. This is of type any. And let's set its default value to null. Now within our resolver service, let's catch the error observable that this employee service is returning. So we want to catch this error observable. So within our resolver service, notice this get employees method is returning observable of employee array, but we want to return this new type resolved employee list. So let's use the pipe method because we want to use the new pipeable operators. And the operator that we want to use is map. We don't have this map operator imported, so let's import it from RxJS. And notice again, the import statement is very similar to how we import Angular types. We specify the type that we want to import and from where we want to import. In addition to map, we also need catch error operator, so let's import that as well. At the moment, our employee list resolver service is returning an employee array. Instead, we want to return our new type, resolved employee list. So let's specify this as the value for the generic parameter for this resolve interface. So instead of returning an employee array, we want to return resolved employee list. We also need to change the return type of this resolve method. 
instead of returning an observable of employee array, we want to return an observable of resolved employee list. We are missing the import for resolved employee list type, so let's import it. Now we know this get employees method is going to return us an observable of employee array. So let's pass this employee array to this map operator. Let's call the parameter employee list. Now notice when I hover the mouse over this employee list parameter, it's the employee array that this get employees method is returning. We are passing that to the map operator. And what we want to do with it is create a new instance of resolved employee list and populate this employee list property of our resolved employee list object. Now, if there is an error, we want to catch it. So let's use the catch error operator. And let's call the parameter error and let's type this to any. In this case, we want to create a new observable. For that, we're going to use observable of and create a new instance of resolved employee list. This line of code is executed when there is an error. So let's pass null as the value for the first parameter employee list. And let's pass this error object as the value for the second parameter. So the important point to keep in mind is in either cases, we are returning the same type resolved employee list. When the service completes successfully, we populate the employee list property with the list of employees and the error property is set to null. We didn't set it here explicitly because within our resolved type, we have set the default value as null. So when the request completes successfully, employee list property is populated with the list of employees and the error property is null. On the other hand, if there is an error processing the request, we set the employee list property to null and initialize the error property with the error object that we received from the service. Now, all that is left to do is consume this resolved employee list type from our list employees component. Notice within the constructor, we're using this key employee list to read the resolver data from the route because that's the same key we're using against this employee list resolver. And we know the data it is returning is of type resolved employee list. So let's create a constant. Let's name it resolved employee list. And this is of type resolved employee list. We don't have this type, so let's import it. Now let's check if the resolver has completed successfully. The way we do that is by checking the error property of this resolved employee list object. If the error is null, then we know the resolver has completed successfully. So in this case, let's populate the employees property of this component with the data from our resolved employee list. We know the employee list property contains the list of employees returned by the service. If there is an error processing the request, the control comes into the else block. So let's set the error property of this component to the value of the error property of the resolved employee list object. Notice we have a red squiggly here. That's because we don't have error property within this component class. So let's create that now. Let's set the type to string. Finally, let's bind to this error property in our view template. Let's create a div element. And let's use interpolation to display the messages that we have in the error property. And we want this div element to be displayed only if error property is truthy. Let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. At the moment, we are on the edit route. Now let's navigate to the list route. We are on the list route. The service failed with an error message and we see that error message right here. The service failed because this URI is not found. So let's fix this error and then reissue the request. So within our employee service, let's remove this one from the URL. Notice now the request has completed successfully. 
Now, if you do not want to create a separate type just for handling the resolver errors, there is another easier approach. Instead of returning resolved employee list, we want to return a union type. We want to return employee array if the service completes successfully or a string error message if there are errors. We want to do the same thing right here. So the return type of the resolve method is an observable of employee array or string. In the pipe method, we don't need this map operator anymore because this getEmployees method is going to return us an observable of employee array if the service completes successfully. If there is an error processing the request, this catch error will be executed and the error is going to be of type string and we want to return an observable of string. Now in our list employees component, we need to handle the resolver data accordingly. The data that we get from the resolver is either an employee array or a string if there is an error. And to make this constant more meaningful, let's change its name to resolved data. Now we need to check if this resolved data constant is an array. And the way we do that is by using array.isArray method. To this, let's pass our resolved data constant. So if resolved data is an array, then we know the service has completed successfully. In that case, let's populate the employee's property with our resolved data. If it's not an array, then we know it's our string error. In that case, let's populate the error property. Let's navigate to the edit route and then to the list route. The service has completed successfully, so we see the list of all employees as expected. Now let's introduce a deliberate error. Let's change the URL within our employee service. Notice the service failed and we see the error message as expected. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.